The following video addresses the inspection and repair of the Ames 4000 SS and 5000 SS backflow prevention assemblies, sizes 2.5 through 6 inch. Before beginning any work, familiarize yourself with these procedures to avoid harming yourself or damaging the assembly. A copy of the following procedures, as well as specification sheets, repair kit ordering information, and additional product resources can be found online at AmesFirewater.com. To inspect your backflow assembly, you'll need a socket wrench, a rubber mallet or hammer, a flat blade screwdriver, and an FDA approved lubricant. To begin your inspection, shut down the water supply by slowly closing both the outlet and inlet shutoff valves. Relieve any air or water pressure trapped within the system by slowly opening the number two, number three, and number four test cocks. With a wrench, disconnect the two bolts connecting the groove coupler. Once both pieces of the coupler have been safely set aside, remove the rubber gasket and lid to access the number one and number two cam check assemblies. Inside the assembly, you'll observe two check modules differentiated as the number one and number two respectively. The number one check, which can often be unscrewed by hand, should be removed first, followed by the number two. If the number one check cannot be unthreaded by hand, insert a flat blade screwdriver against the check body and gently loosen it with a rubber mallet or hammer. Finish unthreading by hand. Similarly, the number two check can be loosened by placing a long screwdriver between the studs on the check body and gently applying pressure. Once the check has been unscrewed, Orient the cam arm downward and carefully lift it through the opening. To remove the relief valve, first disconnect the sensing line from the valve body with a wrench. Place a screwdriver across the edges of two of the hex head screws in the bottom flange cover and turn counterclockwise to loosen the relief valve. Never place a pipe wrench around the body of the valve. Doing so could seriously damage it. Due to the heavy spring load, to open and inspect each of the checks found in the 6-inch assemblies, as well as the number one cam check found within the 2.5 and 4-inch and 994 assemblies, first slide the cam arm over the opening stud on the outlet flange and gently pull the arm back. Lock the check open by placing the arm against the notch found on the check clapper. The number two check found within both the 2.5 and 4-inch and 994 assemblies can be opened by hand. Begin your inspection by cleaning the check module with water to remove any dirt or debris. Once clean, thoroughly dry the module before proceeding with the inspection. In many cases, damage or deeply embedded debris may be invisible to the naked eye and can only be detected by close examination and touch. Inspect all check components including the check body, clapper, seat, and o-ring for nicks, cuts, or debris. Take appropriate action to clean or replace any damaged parts. The number two check found within both the two and a half and four inch 994 assemblies should be closed by hand, while the six inch checks as well as the number one cam check found within the two and a half and four inch 994 assemblies should be closed with the help of the opening stud found on the outlet flange. Finish by thoroughly cleaning the O-ring groove and lubricating the O-ring with an FDA approved lubricant. To disassemble the relief valve for inspection and repair, first unthread the four bolts connecting the cover to the flanged end of the relief valve with a 5 16 inch wrench. With the cover set aside, remove the piston assembly and sleeve from the valve body as shown. Slide the sleeve off of the diaphragm and finish disassembling the unit by unscrewing the hex bolt connecting the rubber diaphragm and piston assembly. Begin by inspecting the diaphragm for any debris, tears, holes, or excessive wrinkles. If the diaphragm is damaged in any way, a new piston diaphragm assembly should be installed. Thoroughly clean and inspect all surfaces within the relief valve body. Should you discover any nicks or damage around the seat surface, the body should be replaced. Finish by inspecting the components of the piston assembly and the sleeve for any significant damage or debris clean and replace as necessary. 
To reassemble the relief valve, start by rebuilding the piston diaphragm assembly as shown. With the unit rebuilt, replace the sleeve with a ribbed edge facing upwards. While still grasping the sleeve, fold the top of the diaphragm over the ribbed edge to hold it into place. To properly refold the diaphragm, cup your hand slightly and force the sleeve down over the piston assembly with a rapid slap as demonstrated. If done correctly, the trapped air in the diaphragm will force the rubber between the inside of the sleeve and the outside of the piston. If the assembly is wrinkled, repeat the previous procedure. Reinstall the assembly in the relief valve body with the hex head bolt entering the flanged end first. With the unit properly seated, reinstall the cover plate and tighten the four bolts evenly to ensure a firm seal. Check should be reinstalled hand tight in reverse of how they were removed, with the number two check going in first, followed by the number one. The number two check should be tightened by placing a long screwdriver between the lugs and tightening firmly. Tighten the number one check by hand only. Place the rubber gasket around the valve access port. Reinstall the lid and carefully move the gasket into place, flush with the edge of the lid. The coupler should be reinstalled around the gasket and lid, tightening the bolts evenly with a socket wrench until the coupler makes pad-to-pad -pad contact. With the gasket reinstalled, re-thread the relief valve hand-tight. Reconnect the sensing line with a wrench to finish reassembling the unit. With everything in place, restart the system by slowly opening the inlet shutoff valve, closing the number two, number three, and number four test cocks and opening the outlet. For more information on local startup and testing procedures, consult your local municipality or manufacturer's representative.